Hello everyone, I am Dweather Dude. Welcome back, and today we are going to be taking our first look at the forecast for the summer of 2023. As always, be sure to watch the video all the way through and to like and subscribe to get the best weather content out there, and we're just gonna get right into it here. So, starting off with the ENSO pattern that we're gonna be seeing, and this does have a surprisingly you know strong impact on the summer season, as it does with uh, the winter season. So an El Nino watch has been issued. So we're expected to see ENSO neutral conditions continue through the spring in Northern Hemisphere spring, followed by a 62% chance of an El Nino developing during May to July of 2023. So we could be seeing an El Nino set in here through uh, this summer. So this video is going to be kind of taking a preliminary look, kind of like discussing it. And then my second summer outlook, which will be released most likely in May, We'll have like, you know, like a map and everything to get like that official outlook. But today we're going to be discussing it and talking about what we could expect for the summer. So let's get into it here, starting with the Climate Prediction Center. Now, I would I would be I tend to say that their um, temperature outlooks are they tend to be like have like a warm bias. I mean, but this definitely like you can see some uh, average, you know, average temperatures is through June through August. Um, sending off across the northern plains. I'm not sure because um, they have the east coast and the southwest in like a, in like a good chance of seeing above normal temperatures. Now, again, this doesn't mean that the darker the color, the more above average you'll be. It just means you have a higher confidence that you will be. Um, typically in El Nino summers, as you're going to see uh, towards the end of the video, I have some, uh, some custom uh, made maps there made through the Climate Prediction Center and NOAA. But you can see... In those maps that I'll show you later, that that El Nino summers aren't typically like this, so it's interesting to see where they got this, uh, where the Climate Prediction Center got this from. But of course, we're going to be investigating, taking a look at a bunch of different sources as we head through the video. So let's start with um, the ENS, ENSO. Um, let's continue with the ENSO uh, pattern here. I'm going to be taking a look at three models. We have the CFS, we have the CANSIPS model, and the NMME model. You can find them here on Tropical Tidbits under the Climate section. Um, and we're going to be taking a look by month. Um, by month, what will the SSTs look like? And as you can see for May, now this came out, uh, of course, today or early yesterday from the CFS model. And they think that by May, we may start to have, you know, little El Nino starting to build there um, in the uh, Nino 3-4 region. And you can see it, and you'll see this in the current data as well. <laughs> the, the Nino, it's kind of like near the Nino 1-2 region uh, by off the coast of South America, but temperature, sea surface temperatures here are like 5 degrees Celsius plus above average. I mean, the waters are far warmer than normal there. So the Nino 3-4 region um, consists, it's between five degrees north and five degrees south here, and then between 120 and 170. So kind of in this region right, is where we have. So basically the way I like to look at it is kind of like take Northern South America, like the equator, just go due west and then go south of Hawaii. And that's kind of where you'll find that region. So it's kind of in this zone here. So taking a look at this, all right, watch as it kind of builds up through July, through August. And they have a pretty, you know, moderate to strong uh, El Nino building in, as you'll see in some more data later as well. All right, so again, kind of, again, kind of in this region right here. Um, this is about like two and a half to three and a half degrees Celsius above average, which would pretty much point out that would dictate a strong El Nino. All right. I'm not saying a strong El Nino is out of the question. Or off the table, but I think for the summer, I don't, I don't see it, you know, strengthening to a strong El Nino. From we're still in the Nino, so neutral. Keep that in mind. We just got out of a La Nina. I don't know if we will get the strong El Nino in a couple of months, but that certainly could be the case for the winter time. It's a possibility. I'm still not saying it's likely. I think a weak to moderate El Nino is most likely uh, through this winter, or sorry, through the summer, and then maybe that persisting through the winter. But you can see by October, I mean, they got a really strong uh, El Nino building there. If we look at the Kansas model, this is a lot more reasonable because their May graphic, and this actually came out on April 1st because they released once a month. But you can see uh, their May graphic has like more, this is pretty much what it looks like right now. So this is pretty accurate. Um, a little bit of uh, above average temperatures starting to work their way in there into that region. But you'll see it building over the next couple months. And by August and July through August, this is like a week to moderate El Nino right here, you know, kind of like one to like one and a half maybe pushing too. So this is like a week to closer to moderate of an El Nino. So this is more accurate 
I would say through the summer. And I, it's nice to see the models do agree on this. If we look at the NMME model, all right, you can kind of see a similar thing here, June, July, August, kind of the same thing building. But also notice that the Atlantic also has warm waters and we'll get into, the, into that what that could entail in a little bit. All right, so if we look at the Nino 3.4, we have actually cracked over the zero line again. Still, the ENSO neutral, it's not like if it goes above the zero line, it's El Nino. If it's below, it's La Nina. There is a neutral zone. And it's between 0.5 degrees above and 0.5 degrees below. So we've, we've reached the ENSO neutral um, uh, threshold, if you will, back in like end of February. And we've pretty much been there since. So it's been a steady ENSO neutral for the past couple of months, uh, almost for the last two months exactly. Um, and we'll continue to most likely go up into the El Nino zone. It's at currently 0 0.07 degrees Celsius uh, above average. Right. If we look here at our SST anomalies, you, you'll see what I was talking about earlier. This is like over five degrees Celsius above average off the coast of South America. And again, if we look at five degrees north to five degrees south, right? And then 120 to 170. So this region right here is the Nino 3-4 region. Again, if you need the coordinates, you, you can always just look them up on Google. Um, yeah, again, five degrees north, five degrees south, and between 120 and 170. So you can already see some above average uh, sea surface temperatures starting to work their way in. I would say it covers a majority of the region, hence why that graphic I just showed you earlier showed it above the zero line. Um, but this El Nino is strengthening, and it's strengthening at a pretty good rate. I feel like you know El Nino is like punching back considering the La Ninas we've had over the last couple or a few years. But again, the Gulf of Mexico is really warm. I talked about that in my uh, first hurricane discussion. Uh, video and also the tropical Atlantic is also starting to uh, build so kind of could be a mixed bag here this hurricane season because factors are working for and against the hurricane season but for what that could mean for the summer I will talk about in a bit um, but you can see on the west coast we have some uh, you know pretty cool waters uh, for right now so taking a look here at the weather channel they actually have released their temperature outlook for June through August and I would say this is I would say this is more accurate, a pretty good bit more accurate than the uh, Climate Prediction Center. As you'll see how I verify this in a little bit. Uh, so the West Coast, particularly California, some slightly cooler air as well as for the Southeast. Uh, majority of the country, right, for like the Four Corners, maybe the extreme Southern Plains, kind of like the Midwest, Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, kind of like slightly above average and then steadily above average um, up to the North here. Now, unlike the Climate Prediction Center map, these actually do mean so like the darker the color gets the more above average you'll be unlike the climate prediction center map this works a little bit differently so the darker shading the more you'll be above or below average depending on which which one you get so that's for june through august outlook for temperatures for precipitation i also do agree with this because it can sometimes be um wetter during el nino summers although we have seen that there are a lot of dry ones as you'll see in a little bit um, but particularly the southeast, got that second shade of green, maybe even wetter uh, than average, and the west, uh, drier than average. Uh, not, not the best, because we know that's their drought season and hitting into the fall as well. So hopefully we can still get some more precipitation for the west. Uh, let's take a look month by month. So starting with June, California is pretty, you know, pretty well below average, all right? which is actually good because it's nice to not see you know, boiling hot temperatures. Uh, the central plains... Uh, pretty, you know, far above average or pretty steadily above average and in the east kind of slightly above average. We take a look to July. Now we got the Midwest, the Mid-Atlantic, Southeast, uh, Mississippi Valley, Tennessee Valley. Uh, in that slightly below average zone, California still maintaining slightly below average temperatures. And kind of Northern Plains and Northern Rockies seeing that kind of far above average uh, temperatures. Look to August and you kind of see it kind of looks similar to the three month average actually. Uh, right here kind of looks similar to that uh, but for August uh, again northern about the northern half of the country pretty steadily or even far above average as you head towards Billings uh, central southern California and the southeast slightly below average uh, in terms of our temperatures all right so here we can see uh, this the temp the sea surface temperatures but also the subsurface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific so again here is your Nino 3-4 region 120 to 170 and then this is like see um like, so the further you go down the more the further below the ocean surface you'll get and you can see by even this is like the end of march all right because this uh powerpoint was uh made by the noaa 
towards the beginning of this month, beginning of April, and even at the end of March, you can see that it's already starting to build up in the warmth. So that's only going to translate to the surface uh, as we head forward in time. Because when the subsurface starts getting warm, you already know the sea surface is going to also be getting warm. And I kind of breeze through this here. All right, and you can see right here that the uh, El Nino La Nina episodes, you can kind of see the La Nina we've pretty much been in since like middle of 2020. So the last couple of years, right? August of 2020 kind of started. And it's so we had it kind of through the 2020 hurricane season, 2021, 2022. And we'll probably, well, we've already broken because 2023, we're officially in ENSO neutral right now. Uh, so we kind of officially broken here towards the uh, uh, beginning here or middle of 2023. And you kind of see the El Nino we had back in 2015. I feel like this summer, this could kind of represent 2015 the closest because um, right now, so April, so actually at April 2015, they were already at 0.7. Okay. And even with how quickly that El Nino and how strong it was, even by the summer, it was still in weak to moderate status. So, so what I'm trying to say here is, is that if we're at 0, 0.0 right now, meaning ENSO neutral, and even in 2015, again, we were already at 0. 0.7 above. And with how quickly that strengthened, we were still, you know, only around hovering around a degree. I don't see how it could get to a degree and a half that fast. Uh, considering 2015 was a pretty strong El Nino year, as you can see, heading towards the end of the year. So again, weak to moderate El Nino probably towards the weaker side um, heading through the summer. And again, we're going to get into, into that very soon of what that could uh, entail. All right, so again, here you can kind of see the uh, probability. So again, ENSO neutral, pretty much dominating through the spring, maybe even through June. But by July, August, it's going to switch over to El Nino. Again, the switchover could happen a little sooner than that, but definitely by sometime during the summer, El Nino will be a building in. You can see La Nina chances are close to zero, so that streak has finally been ended. All right, if we look at some of the uh, modeling here, this is updated on the 20th of March. You can see here we are uh, right around here in the current data. You can see as we head towards the summer, again, most uh, of these models here kind of have like a weak El Nino, kind of like what I've been saying here. And then kind of like sticking around through, could maybe flatline, but it could stick around here uh, towards the end of the year. If we look at the CFS data, which I kind of showed you the CFS model already, hence these maps over here. Uh, but the CFS model data shows a pretty bullish outlook, right? So here we are, right around the zero line, March, April. And here it is by the summer. I mean, we could be around, according to these, about a degree. So a, a little bit more bullish considering that it, we could end up being around two. Uh, but certainly possible by the end of the year. Uh, they were definitely more bullish before. I feel like these updated uh, batch of models are a little bit more reasonable, right? A week to moderate El Nino here by the summer. So the portion of the video you've all been waiting for, what does this mean, right? We've been talking a lot about, you know, what ENSO pattern we're going to have for the summer. What will this translate? What will it mean for you? So what I've done, I've kind of like compiled in NOAA. You can like compile your own maps here. And I've kind of put in all the years, pretty much going back to the like the 1940s and 50s that had El Nino summers. So for these first two maps, I did pretty much all the years that that had El Nino summers, some weak, some strong, uh, some in the middle. And then for the other two, the other set of two maps, I did only like the weak to moderate El Nino years, kind of see what we can expect. So this is pretty much an average of all the El Nino summers we've had going from 1951 all the way up to 2015 being the most recent. And you can see temperatures for the east in those years is like actual data have resulted in, on average, below average temperatures. Anywhere from a degree to even in the Northeast, two degrees um, Fahrenheit below average in a June to August average. And the same goes for the West Coast. And not only the West Coast, but the uh, Rockies as well. So that's temperatures, so typically below average and the kind of middle of the country kind of can swing either way. Now, what does this mean for precipitation? Now, this is kind of where I say it's a mixed bag because the Weather Channel did have a above average precipitation for the East but in these El Nino years that have composited from June to August, um, they have shown, I mean, pretty moderately below average precipitation, pretty much from Maine to Texas, down the East Coast and down the Tennessee, Mississippi valleys. And while the Rockies kind of have that uh, slightly above average precipitation, slightly, but still there. All right, and again, these take weaker and stronger El Ninos into account. Now, these next two maps are, again, like I've said, these are pretty much only weak to moderate El Ninos. 
So you can see the cold air in a week to moderate El Nino summer, typically, and then from 1951 to 2009. I didn't include 2015 because that one was a little bit more of a stronger uh, El Nino here. Uh, but you can see um, below average temperatures, pretty much, again, the Rockies and the Northeast and the Midwest. It's a little bit more wider coverage. It kind of covers the middle of the country as well. So pretty much across the board, cooler temperatures. And honestly, after the summer of last year, I would not complain about that. So in a weaker to moderate El Nino, what does this mean for the precipitation? Now you can see, definitely not as, um, definitely not as you know, concentrated of an area of below average precipitation, but some areas could still be below average in terms of precipitation. So uh, it's a mixed bag here. So it'll be a little bit drier in the summer. Of course, if a hurricane comes through, that could like, change everything, of course. Um, but of course, here you got in the Rockies, still slightly above average precipitation here. So definitely going to be watching this over the next uh, month. Most likely we'll make like a second update, kind of maybe get our, our own map here and to see what this uh, summer could really uh, bring us here. So thank you guys for watching. I am Dweather Dude signing off. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.